Our center has five strategic areas of research. Two of them are targeted towards homeland security. The first one is blast simulations, that is to say how to protect buildings and to mitigate the effects of blasts. The second one is the dispersion of hazardous materials in cities, in urban areas. There are three other areas which are shipbuilding, mainly hull optimization, the fourth area is the computational hemodynamics area, where we concentrate mainly on flows in the brain, with particular emphasis on aneurysms. And then the fifth area is optimal shape and process design. These five areas, which are very much day-to-day, -day, drive everything. The field is very new and it's considered one of the 15 strategic research areas of the United States. It was identified by the Department of Defense is one of the 15 key technologies that will keep the nation at the forefront of advances in technology and, and weapons. One of the most exciting things that has happened over the last three months is that we came up with a new iterative scheme that has enabled us to solve some of the incompressible flows that we, that we have to model. So suddenly to compute the whole arterial tree of the brain has become possible and we're doing that right now. We are trying to change the way doctors uh, treat patients by providing them with tools and information that can predict what's going to happen to an individual patient and then better decide whether to treat and how to treat the patient. We are constructing patient-specific uh, models of blood flows in the brain to study cerebral aneurysms and other cerebrovascular diseases and we work um, in close collaboration with Innova Fairfax Hospital. The basic idea is to try to understand how to identify patients at higher risk of aneurysm rupture leading to hemorrhage in the brain and how to best treat these patients with different endovascular devices. We actually installed the first uh, simulation system at the hospital and the doctors can now, using our software, they can do their own simulations. They can get the images and perform simulations and get extra information about the blood flow that they didn't have before. It's a very exciting time for CFD. We take pride that whoever comes out of our institute or our department here really knows about computational fluid dynamics. Many of our students that we have here go back to the federal government and become either contract monitors or managers that knows exactly what has to be done in real life and who has seen a lot of the applications that we target. Dr. Lone is very approachable. Periodically I get these random ideas about projects that I'm interested in or something I'd like to try or do and uh, you know, I feel comfortable going in and asking him that, you know, and asking him about this idea I have, and you know, he'll tell me I'm crazy or that you know, it's a good idea, or you know, here's some simulation that he's done that's that's similar to that. He teaches aspects of uh, fluid dynamics that are that are very relevant. Um, you know, it's not just theory. He's got a close connection with uh, the industry, so that uh, he he brings that to class with him and helps us learn the subject. I work already in the industry, and so you know, and I've come back to school basically just to advance my studies and help me uh, at work. So I'll be able to take this knowledge and hopefully apply it in projects at, at my job and uh, possibly research in the future. I think this is an extremely interesting place to make a PhD. We have NIH very close for all the biology work that we do. We have a lot of intelligence agencies in the neighborhood here that we work with. We have a lot of Navy labs. There are at least two major Navy labs in the area that we work very closely with. So yes, uh, it is by far our most important competitive advantage. The biggest driver of this field is given by the advancement of numerical methods, visualization, and of course computers and speed. 
by being able to solve the equations that describe fluid mechanics on the computer, you're now able to replace a lot of the experiments by computational methods. And it's, it's to the point that today in the car industry, when you have the prototype ready, that prototype has been less than two and a half hours in the wind tunnel. It used to be hundreds, if not thousands of hours. The important part is that as computers get faster and as algorithms get better, and you put more physical models and more realism into these computer codes, that the envelope of what you can compute is expanding very rapidly. And so this is going to replace a lot of the experiments that people have done in the past. It is a very exciting time and believe me, you get up in the morning and <laughs> you're ready to go. <laughs> yes, it's very nice.